before the video begins, I'd like to state a few things. This video contains some very disturbing and violent stories coming from emergency workers such as EMTs, paramedics, firefighters, 911 operators, etc. I ask that you please respect them in the comments as these were very traumatic experiences for them. I hope that this video spreads awareness on how hard their jobs are and has some lessons for you to take with you. If you can't handle extremely gruesome stories, this may not be the video for you. That being said, let's begin. Number 1. Law enforcement slash EMT here. There was a family of four in the car. Mom driving, teenage daughter in the front seat, grandma and five-year-old son in the back. The mom was texting and driving and didn't notice a huge sweeping curve in the road. Went head-on, driver to driver with a gravel hauler 18-wheeler without either of them having time to touch the brakes. My partner arrived a minute before me, and the first thing I saw upon arrival was him crying carrying the lifeless five-year-old boy away from the car covered in all kinds of fluids. I approached what remained of the vehicle's passenger side and there was blood and brain matter all over. The mom, who was the driver, was just pieces. Completely severed arms still trapped between the steering wheel and dash slash hood and engine. The grandmother was pinned behind her, broken back and neck, internally decapitated. Only the teenage daughter in the front seat survived, which is how we determined the mom was texting and driving. I've responded to a lot of gross and gruesome things, but this was easily the most disturbing. My daughter was the same age as the little boy, and I will never shake the image of his sad, lifeless body and my partner crying while carrying him away. Like other emergency workers say, generally things involving kids are harder to deal with. For fuck's sake, don't text and drive. Number 2. I was a dispatcher for 10 years. When I think of one of my more disturbing calls, a couple comes to mind. There was an elderly man who called and said, I've killed my wife. I'll be in the backyard when you get here. And then he hung up. Turns out, his wife was terminally ill and she wanted to die, so he shot her. Then he walked into the yard to shoot himself because he couldn't live without her. This was both the most romantic and tragic thing I've ever heard. Number 3. Paramedic here. It's like 11.30 at night and we get a call for a pregnant lady experiencing cramps and vaginal bleeding. Great. We get on scene and we find this lady standing in her driveway, shaking, pale, and altered. She wouldn't answer any of my questions and no one else was around. I figured she lost a lot of blood and once we got her in the ambulance, I used a Doppler to listen for fetal heart tones. Nothing. I told my partner that I was going to check inside to see if anybody else was in there, so I grabbed a flashlight and headed towards the open garage. I noticed a lot of blood trailing inside, so I followed it, turning on house lights as I go. It led me through the garage, the kitchen, the living room, and into the bathroom where the only light in the house was already on. I called out, Paramedics, anyone here? No answer. I open the bathroom door and I see the blood trailing towards the toilet. Right next to the toilet was a miscarried 28 to 32 week fetus. It smelled horrible and I suddenly felt really freaked out. I remembered that mothers tend to still require bonding time with their kid after a miscarriage so I picked the kid up and put the body in the bag. Then I returned to the ambulance. Once inside, my partner had started fluids on the patient and I told him what I had found. We decided to just hit the road and get her to the hospital and en route. She didn't say anything for a while. Finally, the mom looked at me and simply and quietly asked if she could have her baby. I said of course and handed her the dead fetus still in the bag. She teared up and held it tight for the rest of the trip. I just sat there, quietly observing her vitals and holding her hand. Number 4. Passengers, keep your seatbelts on and your feet on the floor. Seriously, this is the only call I've ever projectile vomited on. 
There was a husband driving and his wife was in the passenger and her feet were in a squatting position on the dash when they were rear-ended and shoved into a boat trailer. Her left femur turned to powder when it made contact with her left shoulder, shattered both her tib and fib. Also, her scapula and her leg actually ended up looping over her shoulder and her foot and ankle was resting between her back and the seat rest. At first, I thought it was a scarf. I was wrong. Her right knee managed to get shoved back directly into her jaw and knocked out all of her teeth, shattering her jaw and splitting it in two directions. Her tongue and major mouth and neck muscles were halfway swallowed and then attempted to be thrown back up again. My partner's in the back seat holding her head still while I'm throwing a collar on her, planning a tracheotomy to help her breathe. I'll never forget her eyes and head shaking. Like everything in her was trying to reboot and figure out what the fuck just happened. We were trying to punch a breathing hole, but her hyoid bone was fragmented everywhere. We all kind of sat there for a second trying to make her comfortable as she had some last thrashes and passed. EMTs worked their asses off while trying to get you to the ER. We pretty much just drag you out of the car, secure you in the ambulance, and get going. Your best chance is our speediness. But with her, she didn't even look human. We tried CPR, we tried AEDs, every time we touched her she responded with bubble wrap sounds of shattered rib cages, neck filled with blood, bone, and sinew, and her legs are still wrapped all over herself. We never got her breathing again, and she was pronounced dead on arrival. That was the call that made me quit. She looked like my mom, or what I guess she looked like if she was in one piece. Number 5. I wanted to tell this story because there's a lesson to be learned from it. I luckily didn't respond to this one, but my FTO did. So there's a husband and wife at home, cooking. Wife dumps boiling water all over the front of her lap. Husband panics, throws her into his truck, and goes flying to the hospital. He's going approximately 80 and a 50 late at night. He crests a small hill and his truck leaves the pavement ever so slightly so he's swerved. He can't brake and he slams into the back of a dump truck attempting to make a turn. Wife dies instantly, head is caved in by the corner of the dump truck's bumper. I had the horrible pleasure of seeing the wreckage of the truck every day in our impound yard as we investigated the incident. The husband got charged with manslaughter, and I don't know what happened with that. But on top of dealing with killing his wife, he was a wreck. Moral of the story, never attempt to drive someone to the hospital like that unless it is an imminent life or death. Call an ambulance. First responders are trained to drive at a high rate of speed, and can stabilize a patient. Number 6 this was when I was still on placement for being a paramedic. We got sent to a sketchy hotel slash low-income building for a check the welfare funny smell coming from the room. So we get to the dodgy apartment and head upstairs to the room with the little Chinese landlord. On the way down the hall, the smell hit you. Like a dead rotting flesh kind of smell. So we get to the room, landlord unlocks the door. The door won't open, so he had to body check the door open. There was knives jammed into the door frame to keep the door wedged shut, which we thought was a little sketchy. We decided to wait for the police before we entered the room. So we were waiting and we could see that the bathroom is right next to the entrance and there's a tap running. So me and my partner basically say fuck it, let's go check it out. So we head into the apartment, drug paraphernalia everywhere. We turn into the bathroom, find the bathroom sink that was running, and a lady in the bathroom. She is green, like Hulk green, bloated, skin rotting, smells like death, clearly had been dead for at least a week. That was definitely one of the most memorable, disgusting calls I've ever been on. Number 7. Firefighter here. I once responded to a vehicle versus 18-wheelers accident where the car pulled out in front of the truck, which was going approximately 70 miles per hour. The car caught fire afterward. Dispatch initially called it out as a vehicle fire, and when we arrived, it looked like a car had exploded in the middle of the five-lane highway. 
We pulled the passenger out upon arrival and I vividly remember my captain spraying him down with the hose because he was burning. He likely died upon impact, but everything except for his right arm, which had been out the window, was severely burned. My engineer, who pulled him out, said on first grab he felt the skin give away all the way to the bone. That's how badly the passenger was burned. After the accident and the fire, all that remained of the driver was a pile of human parts melted into what remained of the seat and driver floorboard. It was unrecognizable until the coroner started trying to pull it out and I saw some ribs. Part of the driver's face had been cut off upon impact, and it was laying in the roadway among the assorted car parts. It still had hair. The whole thing haunted me for a long time. Hey everyone, I'm doing a live stream on the 16th, so make sure you turn notifications on by clicking the bell near the subscribe button so that you don't miss it. And in case you missed it, my last video was an hour long and full of some incredibly good stories last week. Thanks for watching and have an awesome day.